In this video I'll demonstrate the latest Blender add-ons I've been playing with. We have rigging, animation and even some simulation tools. By the way, Flip Normals are offering a big time-limited deal. 13 sculpting products consisting of courses and brushes, normally $600, but if you claim this special deal in the next 20 days it's just $30. It's a sweet deal, check it out if you're into sculpting. Action Constraints are an amazing tool to create rig automations that would be very difficult to achieve otherwise. Common use cases include mechanical rigs, wings and face rigs. The Action Constraint Builder add-on is designed to streamline the setup of Action Constraints. If you don't know how to set up Action Constraints manually, I'm going to share a video about that, but here is how easy the setup is with this add-on. I'm going to use this bone as a driver, and by moving it on the x-axis, I'm going to want this wing to fold. So with this bone selected, I'll click on Load Driver, set Transform to X Location, in local space and then press OK. Next I'm going to select the bones that will be affected by the action constraint. So all bones on the left wing and click load driven. And at this point we have to click on set driven key to set the default pose of this action constraint. Next I'm going to move this bone on the X axis to around here where I want the wing to fully fold. And next I'm going to start posing these bones in the folded position. That's the great thing about action constraints. Basically, if you can animate it, you can automate it. Okay, let's say that I'm happy with this pose. I'll click set driven keys again. And the folding mechanism is done. Next I could use this same bone to automate the flapping of the wings. So I'm going to load it as a driver again, but this time use its Y location. And this time for the driven bones, I'll just select the main wing bones and load driven. Next, I'll set a driven key. Then I'll move this bone up and then pose the wing up and set driven key. So now we have folding and going up and I can also pose this bone down and then pose the wing bones flapping down and set another driven key. And another very useful time-saving feature is mirroring action constraints. In this menu make sure that you have this option enabled and you'll see this icon here. By the way I can also rename these constraints. So now if I select fold.l and click this button and click OK, I'll have the folding all set up automatically for me. And for the flap again, just click and click and we have everything set up. So if you need to manage many action constraints in your rig, definitely consider using this add-on. It will save you a lot of effort. The more action constraints you have, the more useful it becomes. One of the trickiest problems in 3D animation is dynamically attaching and detaching objects or bones in the scene. Normally this requires complex setups that are difficult to manage and easy to break, but Animation Snapper Pro offers a clever solution. You simply tell the add-on which scene elements should follow another element and it automatically bakes this relationship into keyframes. In the end, nothing is actually parented or constrained. It only looks that way. This is a surprisingly simple and elegant solution to a complicated problem. This tool can be applied in many situations. Parent switching, attaching characters to moving objects or even deforming surfaces, dynamic pivots, but also motion capture cleanup. You can learn how to recreate the examples shown on screen from the add-on creator himself. His tutorials are awesome. For CG Dive viewers, I'll quickly demonstrate some mockup cleanup. A common problem with mockup is sliding feet. So for example, here where the foot should be firmly on the ground, it slides a little bit. So I have to address it from frame one, two, three, to around frame 200. So I can go to the start where the foot becomes planted, 
adjust the pose a little bit if I need to. And then I'll set it as the snapped object in the Animation Snapper Pro interface. I don't need to set the source yet. Then I can just press helper for each. This will create this helper oriented exactly as my foot and it will be static. And the add-on automatically filled this helper as the source object. So now my foot can copy the transforms of this helper object. In this interface, I can start clicking step forward. And this will keyframe the foot in this position. So for a couple of frames, it's already fixed and stable. So I can just keep pressing this button. But instead, I can also batch bake it. So I'm going to bake from one, two, three, and up to frame 200. And let me switch to the curve editor. And then press batch forward. And notice how the curves were rebaked and updated. So now we have a perfectly stable foot for this duration. There may be a slightly harsh transition between the baked portion. So I can just select these keyframes here and press Alt O to quickly smooth this transition. Same on the other side. So this is it for the foot and you can fix the opposite foot the same way. Next, I wanted to show something similar, but slightly more interesting. Here we have the character grabbing its own body. The idea is that he is grabbing a radio on his shoulder. But then the hand detaches from the body. So here I can set this IK hand as the snapped object and the spine as the source. I'll create an offset helper and now it will automatically become the source. And now this helper will be attached to the body. So I can set my range to 96 to 248 or so and batch forward. And as you see, this snaps the hand perfectly to the body. This is a tool that I really wanted, and I even tried to do it myself, but it didn't quite work out. So I'm very happy to have this solution. Again, check out the tutorials by the add-on creator. It also features a more advanced example of motion cleanup. So check it out. Vertex Skin Weights is a weight painting set of tools. While I personally have a nice workflow using Blender's weight paint mode, I sometimes wish for more precision. That is exactly what this add-on offers by bringing the weight painting workflow to edit mode. I've tried similar tools in the past, but Vertex Skin Weights is the first one that made sense to me out of the box and I found it useful right away. I'm going to show you how you can easily weight paint eyelids with this tool. This is a common problem area no matter what kind of rig you're using, and it takes a lot of weight painting to get this area right. But with this tool, I can select my mesh and go to edit mode, go to vertex skin weights, and click on start tool for subdate. This will initialize the tool. And now, for example, I can select these vertices that aren't quite reaching their goal. And the add-on will give me a list of the bones affecting these vertices. And the strongest one will be on the top. So most likely I need to select this bone and the add-on provides a special display of the bones. So you don't need to have your deformation bones visible. And now I can go to the nudge area and click plus. And that will start bringing these vertices closer to where they need to be. Similarly, I can select these bones and they probably need to have less influence by the middle bone. So I'll select it and click minus. Or rather, I probably need to add more influence here for these vertices. So this can be a very precise way to work. And I know that many people who are patient and precise love this workflow. But personally, I'm not that patient. So I'm going to undo and I'm going to show you my personal way of using this add-on, which I found very fast and efficient. And I'm simply going to select all vertices of the upper eyelid. And now I'll look at the list of bones that affect this area. Really, it should be only the bones of the upper eyelid. So I want to select my upper eyelid bones and then click on the invert button that will select all other bones. And then I'll simply go up here and click the zero button. This will give zero weight to all of these bones. 
and it is pretty much fixed the eyelid. Now all I need to do is select these vertices in between and then I'll click on the Hammer Normalize Skin Weights button. This is a custom smooth algorithm that the add-on implements. And so with just a couple of clicks, I'm getting a almost perfectly weight painted eyelid, which is very impressive. I always struggle in this area. To transfer these weights on the other side, I'll simply select the vertices on this eyelid and then scroll down and go to mirror selected vert weights. I believe the add-on implements its own mirroring algorithm, so it may be more robust than Blender's default one. I'll click and we have the opposite eyelid weight painted as well. Very nice. So while I'll keep using weight painting, I'm definitely keeping this add-on on the side and use it for the kind of operations that I find it useful for. Let's say that you have a face with shape keys like open and smile and you like them individually, but when you mix them, they don't look nice. We can fix this with another shape key. So I'll create it, set it to one and tweak the result of the mix of these two shape keys. Now to automate this fix or delta key, you have to set up a driver which basically multiplies the values of smile and mouth open. So we have to set this to a single property, this here to key, and then find the right key, right click, copy data path and paste it here and do the same for the second shape key. And now we have to multiply var by var2. Now only when these shape keys are mixing, the fix or delta key will start taking effect. And the closer both are to one, the closer the fix will be to one. So this can definitely be done manually, but using this add-on, we can do it much faster. It's a $1 add-on and you just have to set your smile and mouth open, click delta shape and you just have to enable them and the delta shape will be created. You just need to sculpt it now. And all of the drivers are set up for you. And by the way, you can also have more than two shape keys that you want to mix. So once you know how to set up a delta shape key manually, just save yourself a lot of time and use this add-on. V-Dynamics is a new soft body simulation add-on for Blender. It uses a custom solver capable of simulating details that are absolutely impossible with the default Blender physics tools. Now I'll show you the basics, a bit beyond the basics and even an advanced example. Everything you need to work with the add-on is in the V-Dynamics tab. First, I'll select my soft object and set it to elastic body and give it a new material. Then I'll select the floor and set it to collider and give it a second material. That's the basics. Then I can just run simulation, save the file, wait to see simulation done and close this window. And now you'll see the exact same simulation inside Blender. And as you can see, we have very stable behavior of these very fine details on this soft body. You can play with the material properties Here I'm getting a softer simulation. And if I want to simulate more of these, I can totally do it. I just have to be careful not to overlap the objects. I'll set it to 150 and run the simulation. Now it will run a little bit slower, but still at almost interactive speed. And in Blender, it will pretty much run at full speed. Now, one thing that you can do easily is animate the collider objects. So I'll duplicate this collider twice and create a little animation squashing our soft bodies between these walls. Let's run the simulation. Again, running super fast. Now here, a couple of these soft bodies managed to escape. This is a lucky accident. This simulator is not deterministic, which means that every time you run the simulation, you may get slightly different results. Now for the advanced stuff, here is how to animate your soft bodies. You cannot animate them directly, but you can control them with other objects such as empties or bones. Here is how it works. You need a vertex group 
called V Dynamics Anim. Select a part of the mesh that you want to control, for example, this tentacle, and assign it to this vertex group. And then I can go to Vertex, Hooks, Hook to a new object. Now this object controls this part of the mesh. And this exact part of the mesh is also part of the V Dynamics Anim Vertex group. Now I can animate this empty and then run the simulation. And now for the advanced example, I was wondering, can I use this for muscle simulation? And I'm still not sure, but here is what I've set up. Again, I have the V Dynamics group, which controls this vertex at the top and at the bottom. And at the same time, the first bone controls this vertex and the second bone controls the bottom vertex. So you can control multiple parts of the soft body and it's a bit cumbersome, but you have to make sure that everything that is being controlled is also assigned to the V Dynamics Anim group. So when I animate the bones, I get something like this. Now I just have some basic elastic body on this muscle and I'll try to simulate it. And here it is moving with the bones. That's it for this video. Let me know what add-ons you'd like me to cover next.